Hello, First Technical Challenge Canada. My name is Derek Murphy from Studica, and we are proud to be a founding sponsor of the FTC Challenge in Canada. Today, I will be sharing with you some background information about your FTC kit of parts, what recommended programming tools are available to you, and what resources will help support you along your new journey. Let's talk about where we are to begin after registration. The first thing you need is the robot build kit and the robot control system. The first technical challenge kit of parts options. When you are at the first technical challenge storefront, teams will have several options for purchase, including either a rev or a Tetrix competition set. Each kit can be used to construct the physical body of the robot. You can find more information about the two official kits in our rev and Tetrix build materials. Teams will also be able to select an electronics module and sensor set and a control and communication set. As a rookie team, if you start by following the basic bot build guide, it allows you to get a little bit of a feel for how things go together. The basic bot guide is found on the First Inspires Building Resource webpage and will provide you with an instruction manual to build the robot using either one of the two selected kits. The basic bot guide, along with other valuable resources, can be found at the following URL. Anyone can use the basic bot guide, but it is most often utilized by rookie coaches, mentors, and team members who can use this guide as a starting point for building their introductory competition robot. There are other hardware systems available, like our very own Studica system, which may be better for advanced teams, but are somewhat less common and have less documentation geared towards beginners. Just remember to check the rules for legal components when building your competition robot. Now let's have a quick look at the 2020-2021 robot control system. A first technical challenge match has an autonomous phase and a driver controlled or teleoperated phase. In the autonomous phase of a match, the robot operates without any human input or control. In the driver controlled phase, the robot can receive input from up to two human drivers. One Android device is mounted onto the robot and is called the robot controller. The robot controller acts as the brains of the robot. It does all of the thinking for the robot and tells the robot what to do. It consists of an Android device running an FTC robot controller app. All new teams for this year will use the Rev Robotics Control Hub as the robot controller. A second Android device sits with the team drivers and has one or two gamepads connected. This second device is known as the driver station. The driver station is sort of like a remote control that you might use to control your television. The driver station allows the team to communicate remotely using a secure wireless connection to the robot controller and to issue commands to the robot controller. The driver station consists of an Android device running the FTC driver station app. Now let's discuss what your team might want to choose for a particular programming tool. During a typical first tech challenge match, a team's robot has to perform a variety of tasks in an effort to score points. For example, a team may want their robot to follow a white line on the competition floor and then score a game element, such as ball, into a goal autonomously during a match. Teams write computer programs called op modes. Op mode stands for operational mode, and these operational modes specify the behavior of the robot. Op modes are computer programs that are used to customize the behavior of your competition robot. The robot controller can execute the selected op mode to perform certain tasks during the match. In order to write one of these op modes, you need to choose a programming tool. Teams participating in the first tech challenge have a variety of programming tools that they can use to create their own outputs. Teams can use a visual drag and drop programming tool called the FTC Blocks programming tool to create their outputs. Teams can also use a text-based Java tool known as the FTC Onbot Java programming tool, or you can use Google's Android Studio Integrated Development Environment, also known as the IDE, to create the outputs. Let's quickly review the three programming tools that are available for the FTC teams to use. The first programming tool is the FTC Blocks programming tool. The Blocks programming tool is a visual programming language that lets programmers use a web browser to create, edit, and save their uploads. Users drag and drop jigsaw-shaped programming blocks onto a design canvas and arrange these blocks to create program logic for the upload. With the Blocks programming tool, a user does not have to have a laptop to create and edit uploads. Instead, programmer can use a device such as a Chromebook, an Android tablet, or an iPad to create and edit op modes. The Blocks programming tool is the fastest way to get started programming op modes for your competition robot. This tool is recommended 
for novice programmers and for users who prefer to design their uploads visually using a drag and drop interface. Here are some of the resources to help you get started with the Blocks programming tool. You would have the Blocks programming training manuals, a Blocks video tutorial playlist, and of course the first technical challenge technology form, Blocks programming subform. Using the Blocks programming subform is a great place to go if you have questions about using the Blocks programming tool. You can also find additional online resources at the GitHub for FTC Tech Blocks tutorials. Now let's talk about the Onbot Java programming tool. The Onbot Java programming tool is a text-based programming tool that lets programmers use a web browser to create, edit, and save their Java uploads. Unlike the Blocks programming tool, Onbot Java uses Java syntax instead of drag and drop programming blocks in order to create your uploads. Onbot Java is a text-based tool and it requires users to have a fairly solid understanding of the Java programming language. With Onbot Java programming tool, just like the Blocks programming tool, a user does not need to have a laptop to create and edit uploads. Instead, a user can also use a device such as a Chromebook, an Android tablet, or an iPad to create and build their uploads. This tool is recommended for programmers who have basic to advanced Java skills and who would like to write text-based uploads. Use the Onbot Java as your programming choice. An easy to use browser-based Java development tool, Onbot Java lets users program in Java without the need to install Android Studio. There are some resources to help you get started on the Onbot Java programming tool. You will have the Onbot Java tutorial, the first technical challenge form for Android Studio and Java programming subform. And once again, you will also be able to go to the FTC Tech GitHub in order to be able to find more information. The third recommended programming tool is Android Studio. Android Studio is an advanced integrated development environment for creating Android apps. The tool is the same tool that professional Android app developers use and can sometimes be quite intense and have a larger learning curve. Android Studio includes some powerful development and debugging tools that are not available with the blocks or Onbot Java tools. Android Studio can, however, be very difficult to both install, configure, and use. Also, Android Studio requires a dedicated laptop or a computer workstation to create, edit, and build uploads. Unlike the blocks programming tool and Onbot Java programming tools, Android Studio will not run on a Chromebook, an Android tablet, or an iPad. Android Studio is only recommended for users who have extensive Java programming experience. As with the other two programming tools, there's lots of resources available to help you get started. Some of the Android Studio resources are the Android Studio Tutorial manual version, the first technical challenge technology form, and the Android Studio video tutorial playlist on YouTube. As with the other two options, there is also the GitHub that you can check out. Look for the Android Studio tutorials. In summary, there are three great programming tools available for you to use in the first technical challenge. Each tool has its own merits and weaknesses. For many users, especially rookie teams and novice programmers, the FTC Blocks programming tool is the best overall tool to use. It's intuitive, easy to learn, and is the fastest way to get started programming with your robot. No matter what tool you choose, always remember that you have the support of FIRST and the FIRST Technical Challenge community. Also be sure to check out the FIRST Technology Forms if you have questions, concerns, or even an answer that you can provide to help support another team. Another great resource is to consult, if you have questions, teams that are local to you. FIRST Canada will have a list of teams and mentors that will be able to support you. Never hesitate to reach out to local teams to see who is available to help. And finally, keep on top of the FIRST Technical Challenge team email blast. FIRST sends the most up-to-date news and information to teams via these email blasts. In future sessions in this series, we will focus on the Onbot Java programming tool, and sometimes we'll do a little bit of the Java blocks to get you started. Thanks for watching, and have a great season.